doorbell camera catches burglars throwing a rock through a window. Hear from the victim who watched it all play out. It's only a matter of weeks until the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office hands over control of the jail. What still needs to get done before that transition happens. Live, local, late breaking. This is KOCO 5 News at 6. Supporting a local death row inmate tonight. Local pastors want your help saving Julius Jones. I'm Abigail Ogle. Good evening. I'm Jessica Schambach. The former OU student is on death row for the murder of an Edmund businessman in 1999. You may know him from the hit ABC show The Last Defense. Tonight, KOCO's Patrina Adger joins us live from our state capitol. Patrina, good evening. Well, there are many that believe that Julius Jones did not get a fair trial. That's why there is a social media push to get 150,000 signatures to the governor's office in time for Julius Jones petition day Wednesday. The social media push to save a death row inmate. For him to have a death sentence is a little beyond the pale of what we consider justice. Senator George Young, one of several supporters of Julius Jones, signing this online petition for clemency. There were some discrepancies. We just want everything to be looked at all over again. Jones was 19 years old when he was convicted of murdering Edmund businessman Paul Howell in his driveway in 1999. Jones has been on death row for 20 years. The case featured in a docuseries, even getting the attention of reality star Kim Kardashian, who tweeted the case to her 62 million followers. Almost overnight, it went from 51 to up into the 90,000s, and now we're sitting at 122,000 uh, uh, petition signatures. Several local pastors, including the Jones's family pastor, Larry Crudup of Tabernacle Baptist Church, releasing videos encouraging their congregation and the community to also send letters to Governor Kevin Stitt and the Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board, asking to commute Jones's sentence to time served. Give this man a fair trial. Relook at the case. And Congresswoman Kendra Horn is one of those that's actually written a letter to the governor asking for clemency. Now, you can find the link to that petition on our KOCO mobile app. Reporting live from the Capitol tonight, Katrina Adger, KOCO 5 News. Back to you. This just in, OU star quarterback Jalen Hurts is a Heisman Trophy finalist. The four front runners were just announced. Sad to tell you, OSU's Chuba Hubbard not on the list. I thought he was pretty deserving. But Jalen Hurts becomes the fifth Heisman finalist for OU just in the past four years. The winner will be announced this Saturday. Of course, Sports Director Brian Keating will have a lot more coming up for you tonight in sports. New at 6, an arrest has been made in this deadly hit and run that we are told could have been caused by street racing. We brought this to you as breaking news when it happened last week near Southwest 29th in May. Oklahoma City 911. Someone just got ran over. There's a guy down. They ran somebody over. Several people called 911 after Billy Payne was hit and killed. Authorities arrested one person. We're not naming him because he has not been formally charged. Two suspects caught on camera seconds before they throw a rock through a window and then burglarize a home. You see them on this doorbell camera video here. KOCO's Aaron Bue spoke to the woman who says the suspects acted like they thought the house was empty. Now, after those suspects knocked on her door repeatedly, they picked up this rock, came here to her backyard and started smashing in her window. Wow. Well, I was really kind of shocked. It's kind of scary. You know, knowing that somebody actually came in my yard. What Gina Garrett Cox says frightened her were these two suspects. I thought it was my son. She says she was taking a morning nap when the suspects knocked repeatedly on her front door. But then I heard something uh, that sounded like glass breaking. Gina then got out of bed to see what was going on. In the living room, I saw that my window had been broken by a rock that was on my front porch. Police say both suspects entered the home to uh, try to see what they could steal. Gina says by the time she got to the window, both suspects were gone, but left a phone behind. The police officer came. He was going to drive around the neighborhood. That's when the officer saw this suspect looking for his phone near her yard. That'd be him, wouldn't it? You're under arrest for attempted burglary one. Police are still looking for the second suspect. Reporting in Oklahoma City, Aaron Bue, KOCO 5 News. Going back for that cell phone, Aaron, thank you. In commitment 2019, Oklahoma City goes to the polls tomorrow to answer one simple question. 
yes or no. Maps four on the ballot. And our KOCO's Evan Onstott joining us now with what voters need to know. Big day tomorrow, Evan. It is, and I got the sample ballot right here. It's about as short and sweet as you can get. Yes or no on extending a penny sales tax to pay for $978 million in projects. So here's what you need to know. The polls run tomorrow from 7 to 7. You're going to need to bring ID and you will be voting at your normal polling place. And if you don't know where that is, here's how to find that. Go to KOCO.com or the KOCO app right now. Click on our Maps 4 story that's there at the top. We have a link to find your polling place and to check to make sure that you are registered to vote. Now, if you're not registered, I'm afraid it's too late for this election. And that link, by the way, it works great. Just trust me, I used it to find my own polling place a few minutes ago. I've also put that link up on my Facebook and Twitter page as well. Back to you, Jess. All right, Evan, and that cold we're feeling right now will stick around in the morning as people head to the polls. Chief Meteorologist Damon Lane here with us now. Damon, you know, this is the December weather really that a lot of people have been waiting for. I think a lot of us say, yeah, you know, we, we like the cold, but sometimes you just wish you could do without the wind. I know those winds, they have been strong all day long. Winds are now coming down under 20 miles per hour. Winds will continue to come down as we go into the overnight hours, but right now we're running 10 to 20 degrees colder right now compared to this time yesterday and this cold. It's going to be sticking around once again, as you just heard Jess mention, as the polls open in the morning. So coming up, I'll show you when temperatures will reach the 50s. That's a big deal this time of year, and that sunshine will make it feel even nicer. Abigail, back to you. Oh, that sounds good, Damon. Thank you. In a little more than three weeks, a massive change is expected here at the Oklahoma County Jail. The Sheriff's Office will be giving up control, Jess, to the new jail trust. Yeah, but Abby, will the trust be ready? That's the question. And also, how much is it going to cost you, the taxpayers? KOCO's Dylan Richards looks at the long to-do list before the end of the year. Yeah, a lot more than you'd think to get done before that transition happens. You got to think about moving the entire sheriff's office to a new area and getting the jail ready for new boss. The county's jail transition committee deep into the red tape today. We need to pick the best option and make a decision because remember our timeline was stated very clearly. And that January 1st deadline put out by the sheriff, a whole lot to do by then. The county needs to find a new home for the sheriff's office. Maybe this county owned building, although that's not set in stone yet. They also need to know what work's being done at the jail and what work needs to be done. Plus the long, long list of property at the jail like computers and printers. Can the new jail trust technically even own property yet? On top of that, what happens to the employees who keep working at the jail? Do they keep their uniforms, their sick leave? All questions needing answers as time runs out. We have a jail that somebody is going to be using and right. owning and maintaining. And um, I mean, and that's a, you know, $100 million question right there of right. who is going to maintain that building. In Oklahoma City, Dylan Richards, KOCO 5 News. Thefts reported at both slips in Oklahoma. The unique way the suspects escaped each time and the one slip up that led to their capture. And hacked on Facebook, the strange messages sent out claiming to be from one of our former state senators. We'll show you. Two suspects using a canoe to get away. Investigators say the pair stole uh, fishing poles, tackle, tackle boxes from boat slips in Marshall County. At least two people say they confronted these suspects. Deputies ended up finding the two hiding under a bed in a home that was also burglarized because a foot was sticking out. A canoe, okay. Very interesting, that's a new one. Hey, listen, we're a little more than two weeks away from Christmas. We have the countdown on your screen right now. And just about 45 minutes ago, this happened. Yeah, the annual Christmas tree lighting. Our governor was there to help out with that. We've got a live picture for you right now. This is at the Oklahoma History Center. So this is the tree lit up in all its glory. Students from 25 public schools helped to design the ornaments and to decorate the tree as well. Today is the final day for you to help out with our toy drive. You can donate a toy or, or money to Mathis Brothers at Reno and Portland until 9 o'clock tonight. We would really love your help with this. We're going to take those kids um, at OU Children's Hospital, the toys. If you donate as well, you're entered to win some pretty great prizes. A former state senator hacked on Facebook. We will show you the bizarre messages sent out claiming to be from one of our former lawmakers. And we are now in final approach to Christmas holidays coming up the newest outlook and what you can now expect for the rest of the year.
there's been a lot of Heisman Trophy flavor here in the state of Oklahoma, and really for a long time, right? Heisman finalists released tonight. Breaking news next, KFCO 5 Sports. Posing as a former state senator, hackers cloning Anastasia Pittman's Facebook page and sending messages to her followers. She left her position as a state lawmaker last year, but she still uses her political page. KFCO's Patrina Adger shows us what the hackers tried to do. Jessica and Abigail, I know Senator Pittman and we normally correspond through the cell phone. So when I got a Facebook message from her asking about my family, I knew it was bogus. I found out when a couple of friends sent me messages through Messenger and through my text message. Friends of retired Senator Anastasia Pittman getting messages like this one Sunday morning. The profile picture familiar, the conversation not so much, containing grammatical errors saying, I'm happy to see you online. Hope you have also heard about the good news yet. The frustration comes in when people have an ill will intent. The message saying the retired Senator got a Christmas grant award of $30,000, asking if I got mine yet. We're not gonna ask for personal information through a vehicle such as Facebook or Twitter. Pittman said her friends knew the profile and the messages were all fake, quickly changing her password and doesn't believe any personal or financial information was compromised. We're thankful that we do have uh, Facebook friends who really do know us mm -hmm. and have other means of communicating with us. Katrina Adger, KOCO 5 News. Katrina, thank you. A car stolen and two taco trucks held up all in the span of about 12 hours. Oklahoma City Police say two suspects stole a car late last night near Northwest 16th and MacArthur. The victim says that the suspects had a gun. Then this morning, police say the same pair tried to rob a taco truck near Southwest 59th and Walker. Also this morning, the duo tried to do the same thing at another taco truck near Southeast 44th and Shields. They left empty handed in both cases, but police haven't made any arrests. Weekend was beautiful. Suddenly that cold front came in early this morning and going to work didn't feel too bad. But when you're coming home from work this afternoon, yeah, it was not fun to be outside. Those Oklahoma winds are still up around 17 to 20 miles per hour, making it feel like 27 degrees here in Oklahoma City. 30 is what it feels like at Tinker Air Force Base. Down at OU feels like 32 degrees. These winds that we have outside right now, they're going to come down as we go into the overnight hour. So it's not going to feel, it's not going to sound that loud tonight, but it's still going to be just a little noisy as we go into the overnight hour. So with this cold air mass in place, we're going to do something we haven't done really in well over a week, and that is have a day with below average temperatures. It has been a very mild start to the month of December. So tonight below average 25 will be common from Guthrie to Edmond to Moore, Norman, Blanchard, 27 and Chickasha, mid 20s for lows out across western Oklahoma. So it is a cold night tonight. And while it will be cold to start, it's going to at least have a little bit of a chill in the afternoon. But tomorrow's 48 degrees. Yes, that's below average and temperatures are still going to be on the chilly side. But at least without the wind, it's not going to feel horrible outside. The sun's going to make it feel a little bit nicer. The light winds will make it feel a little bit nicer as well. So temperatures tomorrow climbing into the upper 40s, 50 out across western Oklahoma. But this is just a we're in a very weird weather pattern. And this is just going to be a very, uh, I guess you could say typical December week. We do not have any strong cold fronts at all in the forecast the rest of the week. So tomorrow we're at 48 degrees. This red line shows where we should be for this time of the year. So we're pretty much just bouncing back and forth right around this red line here. All in all, not a not a horrible week. This is a good week for us. This means that there are not a lot of strong storm systems moving across the United States. This means that your Christmas packages that you have ordered and they're pretty much somewhere in the uh, delivery system should be uh, arriving as scheduled. So this is a good week for us. But as we go into early next week, there's going to be a storm system that's going to make its way across the United States, one that could delay your packages a bit here. Now, we still have 15 days until Christmas, but still, uh, this is not what you like to see during the holiday period. 20% chance of rain. It's all rain for Oklahoma City to Seminole to Stillwater. Right along the border, we're going to see a low-end chance for some freezing rain and sleet, and that will carry itself up into Kansas. I know uh, winter break is about to start for many universities. This is a travel weekend, so if you are traveling this weekend, if you're going north, 
Just know that going up and towards Kansas, you're going to be dealing with a little bit of ice. If you're going south, it is going to be a very cold rain, but there really are not a whole lot of storm systems to be found for the rest of the year. We still have about three weeks left and the latest outlook now coming in from Christmas week to New Year's Day still shows above average temperatures across all of Oklahoma. That means the final days of the year expect that we'll see many more highs in the 50s and 60s. So in the meantime, this week, a lot of sunshine. Temperatures in the 50s, even morning low temperatures are warming up as well. Here's that storm system that we were just showing you that will affect us Sunday going into Monday. But otherwise, we go back into next week. Highs return back into the 50s. And you're up to date with the latest First Alert forecast. Now, KOCO 5 Sports. I hope the Sooners have like a timeshare in New York City, maybe just a whole building they can go stay at because um, this is a tradition, right? Breaking news just unveiled tonight. Jalen Hurts has been named a Heisman Trophy finalist. It's the fourth year in a row that uh, the Sooners have had a Heisman Trophy finalist. Five finalists over that uh, period of time. And oh, by the way, back to back, Heisman Trophy winners. Baker Mayfield lifted it up in 2017. And then, of course, Kyler Murray won the Heisman Trophy last season. And, and Jalen Hurts has a chance to be the eighth Heisman Trophy winner from the University of Oklahoma, going to New York City. And so, so here's your finalists along with Jalen Hurts. You get Joe Burrow, quarterback from LSU. Justin Fields, the quarterback from Ohio State, and Chase Young, defensive lineman from Ohio State. They'll announce the, uh, the winner on Saturday night. So Oakland uh, State fans watching certainly with interest tonight. Chuba Hubbard, not a finalist for the Heisman Trophy, although he was awesome this season, led the nation in rushing almost 2,000 in yards. But uh, not enough. Cowboys haven't had a Heisman finalist since Barry Sanders won the Heisman Trophy back in uh, 1988. All right, let's look ahead to the games tonight. The Oklahoma City Thunder on the road against the Utah Jazz. And you know what? They've been playing great. They've won four of their last five games. And so that one at 8 o'clock from Salt Lake City. And did you know if the season ended today, the Thunder would be in the playoffs? They'd be the seventh seed. Now, they're only 10 and 12, but what? They've been tough every night. Been a lot of fun to watch. And then a, another tough game tonight on the road against the Utah Jazz guys. But Heisman news, Jalen Hurts off to New York City this weekend. This is our big surprise today for a deserving teacher in the Metro. We're going to tell you just how Kim Clark goes above and beyond every single day for her students. Plus uh, a surprise announcement from Governor Kevin Stitt where he will be speaking this weekend. We'll tell you. I want you to know that our own Miss Kim Clark was just recognized as Teacher of the Month. I love the announcement and the big smiles. Another special morning at a metro school as we surprised our next teacher of the month. This was in Putnam City. I love these. I do too. is Jason Hackett shows us the full surprise and why this educator is so deserving. Knock, knock. Kimberly Clark. Hey, Jason Hackett from KOCO5. You are our November Teacher of the Month. Oh my God. <laughs> Will Rogers Elementary School teacher Kimberly Clark is the definition of a dedicated educator. I was always in the restaurant business. I decided to go back to school later in life to get my teaching degree, and I wouldn't do anything else differently than this. Folks who nominated Ms. Clark tell KOCO5 she works round the clock for her students. Her day doesn't end when the school bell rings. And I work here every day, and I stay here until 5, and then I go tutor until 7.30 get home about eight o'clock and I do that five days a week and then I tutor on the weekends. She's also passionate about helping kids of all ages and abilities. Growing up I was a special needs child and I needed the attention as well and I love giving it back and I just watching them grow and making progress is very rewarding to me. Ms. Clark will receive $1,000 for a project of her choosing on DonorsChoose.org, courtesy of Quail Creek Bank. In Oklahoma City, Jason Hackett, KOCO 5 News. Yay. Oh, congratulations, Kimberly Clark. She is a hard yeah, worker. Yeah. And listen, we need your help to find our next great teacher. You can nominate someone right now. Go to KOCO.com. Look for our Teacher of the Month section because each month we choose one to receive $1,000 for their project on DonorsChoose.org. 
Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt will be the commencement speaker at OSU this weekend. There's actually two ceremonies Saturday at Gallagher Iba Arena for the undergraduates. Governor Kevin Stitt graduated from OSU in 1996 with a degree in accounting. OU's graduation ceremonies start Friday night. They'll continue on Saturday. We just want to say congratulations to all the graduates. Coming up tonight at 10 as you watch KOCO 5 News short on donations, a local foster group in need. We are talking to them tonight about how you can make sure those children across the state have a Merry Christmas. Of course, Christmas is a little more than two weeks away and I've been talking with this foster group. They tell me, Jess, that they are seeing 30 new children enter that system every day around this time of year. We got to make sure they have a Merry Christmas. It is just heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. so anything that you can do and you'll have that story for yeah. us tonight at 10. Wheel of Fortune is coming up next. We'll see you. Have a good evening.